Let's get started. Uh, again, my name is Jason Eldridge. For those of you that have, have just joined us, I'm the director of student activities. Um, just, just so that everybody knows that I'm a real person, I am live and direct from the Fairfax Hyundai. <laughs> Nobody wants to know what an air conditioning compressor costs because it's way out of control. Um, my, joining us today, of course, is our uh, track cross country coaching staff. We're excited to have them. Uh, Coach Daniels, star of the show, will we'll be picking up here after my intro, but he's coming to us from Patriot High School, started the uh, Patriot program, and um, essentially is, you know, very, very astute to the running world. Um, did want to give uh, some people some heads up. Not only is he a champion, but he's bringing a staff on that also collectively has a lot of experience working um, with the track and field and cross country arenas. So we're real excited to have them. Originally, this was just a cross country inf informational meeting, but we are gonna roll in uh, the indoor and outdoor track elements as well. Uh, we'll try to keep, keep to the time. Uh, hopefully between 7.15 and 7.30, we, we'll be finished here uh, this evening. He, we will have interest meetings when school starts for our winter and spring uh, program. So this includes track for kids to get a, a, a jump on um, those seasons and those activities. A couple of notes. We are already booked to host our indoor district, Cedar Run District Championship, and the indoor region championship. So that's coming. Uh, really excited about our track facility. They did a real nice job in the architectural drawings, uh, giving us super, super facilities. We're getting the track curbing we need to um, sanction events to include invitationals. And we're also putting in, and it has to be approved by the VHSL, but we would like to host the 2023 state 6A outdoor track meet. So. Lots of exciting things. We're hoping to make that a centerpiece of the facility. Uh, right now, start date, <clears throat> July 29th, according to the VHSL calendar. Uh, we don't know when we're gonna be able to get into the building. My hope is that we get a temporary occupancy by July 15th by the fire marshal and then full occupancy closer to the end of the month. But that does not have to stop uh, our fall activities from starting. We're, we're gonna be getting registration uh, elements done uh, for kids. So please be mindful, parents and children, you must have a VHSL physical on file. You can see our um, home webpage and there's a student activities and athletics uh, menu option at the top of the page. You, you click on that. That takes you to uh, the main page uh, for our activities. And there is a link to the updated VHSL um, physical form. Be mindful it is different from last year because of COVID related issues. We are almost done to release GainesvilleCardinals.com. That's our domain. That will be where our, our school and activity and athletics website will be hosted. Our coaches will be posting information um, hopefully very soon starting on that platform. We just have to get it all up and, and running and organized uh, before we can release it. Uh, with that in mind, um, let's talk about eligibility. For those of you entering as a ninth grader, uh, you, you get a one-time clearance from the middle school. Uh, so regardless of what your grades looked like last semester, uh, leading up to the end of the school year, you get a free pass, you're ready to rock. You just need to make sure that you are taking five for credit classes. Now this is any semester you participate in any activity. So that will jump into uh, both the winter and the spring season. And the winter season is different from the spring and the fall. Winter crosses over from first semester to second semester. So I will run eligibility in November when your children sign up to be a part of the program. But then I, I will have to run them again in late January, about the Martin Luther King timeframe uh, in order to ensure that they're eligible for the second semester. So one semester clears you for the following semester. That means if you're a rising 10th grader, the grades that you just earned heading out of last school year in June, right, will be the determinant to your eligibility for the fall. According to the VHSL, you must pass five four credit courses in order to be eligible. Prince William is a little more strict than that. Of those five passing grades, two of those grades must be a C or higher. So I'll be running those those transcripts in order to create the eligibility. But in addition to that eligibility, 
your registration must entail the physical and the concussion education platform. This year, that is going to be virtual only. That is different from normal years where ninth graders and their parents must participate in person for that training. The training will be released hopefully soon by, by the county. Um, sure, there are some ads and adjustments based on the COVID situation um, that we must portray, but please everybody stay tuned for that. We'll try to market that as soon as possible. We will also ask you to fill out an emergency care card when you come in to register. That is so that when we go to meets that are out of campus or even on campus and we need a medical emergency first responder situation to occur, that they are provided with emergency contact information. So please be aware of that. We will have an online registration link on our R school, GainesvilleCardinals.com website. Um, again, as soon as we get that up and running. I don't anticipate that actually being fully functional until the winter season, but be mindful that's going to be there where you're gonna be able to upload all your documents online for us to preview. Our registration window for the fall will be July 21st to the 30th. Right now, 4 to 6 p.m. on campus. That's all dependent whether we get full occupancy to the situation. Activity Booster Club. We've already kicked off our Activity Booster Club. I'm going to drop in the chat not only the link to the activities website on our homepage, but also um, our Activity Booster Club um, information, my information for the Activity Booster Club. If you're interested in participating, I have broken the the uh, workload into three different committees. We already have parents and coaches on board with this. If you'd like to be involved, please hit me up. I will provide you all the information. We're gonna start actually this week on the startup process with the startup committee for the federal and the state accreditation uh, for nonprofit status. Again, if you're interested in taking part, we'd love to have you. Otherwise, when we get the club up and running, we'd love everybody's input and um, appearance. Just on behalf of the track and cross country teams, uh, we need those of you that that would like to join us to advocate for them, as well as the coaches. A uh, couple features to the webinar before I, I end my my piece here. There's a Q and A feature at the bottom of your screen. All you got to do is click on it, type your questions. Myself and the staff will will be here to help answer as much as possible. Coach will give time at the end of the webinar, and he'll go through those as well. You may also use the chat function. q and is probably a little more effective, but chat can also work. Uh, and again, we'll try to answer all the questions that you have. Again, really appreciate everybody coming out. I'm real excited for our track and cross country programs to get started. And if you need anything, like I said, I'll drop my, my email in the chat for you to get a hold of me. Thanks for joining us. And I'd like to introduce Coach Daniels. Hello, everybody. I hope everybody is doing well. Um, like uh, Mr. Elder said, I am uh, Coach Daniels. Uh, Adam Daniels. I have uh, I've been coaching for a very uh, for a very long time. I've had taken a couple years off. Uh, I took a little hiatus of about four years, um, just in between my uh, from ending my career at Patriot and then starting this one up. Um, so, but uh, I am really excited. I started Patriot uh, ten years ago. Um, and we built that uh, literally from the ground up. Uh, Ms. Joyner, who is also joining us, uh, was part of that program uh, build. Um, and, uh, and so uh, she will be joining us uh, as both the teacher uh, that's also here. Uh, I'm going to get into the introductions in a second. So hold on and I'll come back to those um, just so you kind of know who everybody is. Um, and then I will introduce everybody. But you can't see my screen, so hold on. Um, I do want to be mindful of your time. I don't want to keep you guys too late. Um, so I will. Uh, I'm gonna. My my goal is about seven, between seven and seven ten. Um, I, I sometimes can be long winded, but uh, I'm hopeful that my notes and uh, I will be uh, clear and ah, clear and concise. So here we go. Uh, and let's go to present mode. There we go. All right. So. Um, as the screen says, uh, we this is Gainesville High School cross country track and field. I am some I'm grouping all these things together. Uh, all these, all three of them. I'm the head coach for all three seasons. Um, so we'll go from. So if you do all three seasons, I will be with you from August second. Will be our first official practice all the way through. Uh, what is that? Uh, June. I think the state meet is June fourteenth next year. 
uh, for track. Um, so it is a long season and we're together for a really, really long time. Really not a lot of blackout periods, which is good in a way because a lot of consistency. Um, one of the reasons why I enjoy coaching all three seasons is I get the consistency of the athletes, the, like, uh, specifically with distance runners and, and with our sprinters. Um, when I get to introducing our sprint and throws coach, um, we're, they will be consistent throughout. So I will be with you the entire year with the distance runners. Um, so that, therefore, I know exactly what you've done um, and as a buildup and then all the way through. Um, so. Uh, so as it says, I am Coach Daniels. Uh, I'm the head coach cross country and indoor and outdoor of track and field. Uh, coach Sarah Joyner, who's also on here, uh, is the assistant coach cross country, indoor and outdoor. She'll be with us for all three seasons. Uh, Ms. Joyner, did you want to say hi? Oh, sorry. I'm unable to open my video. Um, I'm Sarah Joyner. I was with Coach Daniels at eighth grade high school, so I kind of knew the ins and outs of how he likes to run a program. Um, I ran cross country in high school and then played soccer in college, but you'll hear coach Daniel see often that um, running is, is more of a lifestyle type of idea. And so I've kind of continued that in my own personal life. So um, I've been with, again, like I said, with coach Daniels for a bit. So I'm doing, we've already got questions in the Q and a here, coach Daniels. So, okay. We'll get to those. We just we'll save them, and then we'll get to those in the end. But yeah, if you get something, just throw it in there, and I will make sure that I. Uh, oh, there you go. Hi. Um, Thank you, Mr. Eldridge. <laughs> and then I will make sure that we get to them uh, when we get there. So oh. awesome, awesome. All right. So um, as I didn't mean to interrupt you. Good. Are you good, Miss Joyner? Thank you. Okay. Um, I also have uh, in the, and I, and I think she's in the actual, in the other side, not the attendee one, or in the attendee side, not the panel side, um, but uh, Miss Allison Pierce, uh, Coach Pierce will be joining us uh, this year for cross country. Um, she's an assistant coach. Um, I don't think she's able to, to unmute because she's attendee, um, but you guys will get to meet her. Um, we're going to do something in August, uh, hopefully have a couple runs through July, and I'll briefly talk about those in a little bit. Um, just kind of very informal. We're just going to meet up um, at somewhere and just kind of have an informal, just kind of get to know you, see some people and stuff like that, and you'll get to see her then. Uh, coach Dillard, who will be joining us for indoor and outdoor, uh, he will be the sprints, jumps, and hurdles coach. Um, and then Coach Tom Sutliff, who also uh, worked with me at Patriot with uh, Ms. Joyner and I, um, he will be the uh, throws coach, uh, so he will also be with us um, for uh, the indoor and outdoor season. Uh, and so contact stuff for you guys. Um, uh, Twitter is GHSXETF. Um, it was, it's amazing when we opened Patriot, there's only one other Patriot high school and that was in California. So when we opened Gainesville, there's a lot of Gainesville high schools. Um, so trying to find a, uh, some variation and, and grouping of letters and stuff that worked together that made sense that I can actually remember was a challenge. So, uh, but that's what I came up with. Um, so GHS, XET, and F, feel free to add me. Uh, on there um, that will only ever be used Twitter is it, it, I won't ever be exclusive to one area um, whenever I send out announcements it will go out through tweets it will go out through a, an email um, it will get posted on whatever uh, school uh, school vessels that need to be uh, posted on so I will make sure I have all that stuff out there so that way you can all see um, and that stuff. Uh, the uh, email is xctnf at Gainesville HS. I use that for all three seasons. It helps separate my teaching world and my track world um, because there will be, I will have, I, I, I will be teaching freshmen and sophomores next year. I'll have world one and world two. Um, Ms. Joyner will have world one and world two. No, you'll have AP world. Um, and so, um, so I, I will have some of you in both worlds, but I'm, I try not to blend them um, because my teaching world is the one that pays my bills uh, and my coaching job is something that I just, I truly love doing. Um, so, um, so that's one of the ways I try to separate them, but I get everything on my phone. So it really doesn't make a difference. Um, any COVID-19 protocols? I figure this was the first one we would put on here. Um, we'll adhere, all coaches, athletes will adhere to all, all COVID-19 protocols that are set forth by the county. Uh, we don't know what those will look like right now. So uh, I, I don't have anything on there, um, but whatever those happen to be, um, uh, whether it's what they did last year with having to fill out a form every single day before you came to practice, um, uh, or if it was something else that needed to be um, done, wherever mask face coverings we need to have or anything like that, uh, we, will, um, we will adhere to any of and all of those programs. Coach, can I interject for Yes, everyone? you can. We have no documented approach at this time 
for swole or mask coverings. So right now we are planning to open normal like we would any other normal year. Okay, well, thank you very much. All right, uh, so program goals and expectations. And I'm gonna kind of get into this uh, as we go, but um, this, is, uh, the reason why I had all three seasons together is that I don't view you as simply being uh, a hurdler or a thrower or a distance runner or a sprinter. There's a lot of crossover with a lot of these. There are also maybe some of you who are swimmers that will take the indoor season off and want to be swimmers, or they may be baseball players or basketball players, whatever you happen to be. Um, I will we'll have people who will dual sport uh, in the winter uh, and in the spring, possibly, and, and with um, with some of the different activities. And, and we'll talk about that on a case by case basis. I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves into the nitty gritty of what that looks like. But if that's something that you're interested in doing, we will have that conversation. Um, and I will make sure we include the other coaches and we, we kind of go through that process. Um, but the way I look at this is that it, you're, you're, you, this is a lifestyle. So there are no cuts on this program. Um, I will keep everybody and anyone who is willing to work. So if you're willing to show up every single day and you're willing to put in the best effort that you can give, um, and you don't necessarily have to be the best there, that that's, that's not a thing. Um, that I concern myself with, I concern myself with you making your personal growth uh, and personal strides getting better. Early in the year, we're going to make goal cards. Um, and um, it's something that you're going to take to yourself and you're going to put it up on your mirror or your door, wherever you see it first thing in the morning. And those are going to be the things that you're going to tell yourself of what you want to do, because the mindset is the most important thing. But running is a lifestyle. I've been doing this. My first race was when I was 11 years old. I am now 42 years old and I still run. I ran a half Ironman because I got suckered into it. And I did that like just a month ago. Um, so, uh, and, and so I'm still active and I still do things. Um, I still look for challenges because I like to challenge myself because that's what makes this, um, this sport so exciting. Uh, it's provided me a lot, provided me an education, met my wife through running. Um, so the, I had done a lot for me. So I view this as a lifestyle, not necessarily a sport. If you're willing to invest in yourself and put yourself out there and you're willing to challenge yourself, then I'm willing to work with you to get you better. Um, you're the only way that you're going to cut yourself is if you are going to end up cutting yourself. And I will tell you, and I tell all my athletes this, if it's something that you really hate doing it, then don't do it because running is really, really painful. And if you're doing it correctly, it's going, you're going to have elation and you're going to be really successful when you challenge yourself and physically put yourself out there. But if it's something that you're just miserable about, it's not going to be fun. Um, so make sure it's something that you kind of explore when you do this um, and that you're cognizant of kind of as you go. Um, but it is super fun. We make this a lot of, a lot of fun because we understand that. Um, this joiner has already been prepping games and stuff that we do. We'll do a lot of team building um, this year. We do a lot in the summer. Um, hopefully when like coach uh, Eldridge said, we won't have any protocol. So maybe we'll be able to like do like some ships to shore or stuff like that. Um, <laughs> and so stuff like that. So um, we will make this a lot of fun. Um, nutrition is very important. Um, just like I said, it's a lifestyle. Um, it's not a sport. It's a lifestyle. It is a, a nutrition is incredibly important. Uh, making sure you're eating well. That's hydrating every single day. Uh, drinking lots of lots of water. Uh, making sure you're eating good food. Um, I, you don't need to be like you don't need to be like strip every bad thing out of your diet. Um, but just be mindful of what you're eating. And we'll talk more about nutrition as we go um, to make sure that uh, we're you're you're get, putting your yourself because you want to put the best thing into your body your body's the engine and you want to make sure you're putting the best stuff in there um, you need to be prepared for practice every day and you need to take care of yourself before during and after practice um, and that includes your priorities which are going to be your family and your academics you are a student athlete you are a student first then you're an athlete um, so grades are always going to be the most important thing um, we will talk about um, how the school looks and what our uh, availabilities are going to be in terms of when we can do makeup work um, and, uh, and when, and there'll be things where I will have to be a little late. I, we understand those things because I will have, may have extra help or Ms. Joyner may have extra help. Um, Ms. Pierce is coming to us from, um, Metz middle school. So, um, so she, uh, she's in a different building, uh, and really in a different school district and has to get herself here. So, um, so it will be, it, it will all kind of be on a, and a little bit. So we're, we're very tolerant of it, but academics and family come first. Um, and so, um, we don't, I do not bog you down with lots of meats. Um, and I hope that 
um, that when you guys want to do this, that we're doing like that if you're a hurdler, you want to do cross country to build your strength. Um, I had a very successful hurdler, um, uh, Matt Wilson, who just competed at the uh, NCAA national meet um, and uh, made it into the semifinal rounds, but he ran cross country all four years. He was never going to be on varsity. That wasn't why he did it. He did it because on day one, when we started indoor track, he was already in the best shape that he was going to be in. And he can just build and develop from there. Uh, and he just got better and better. He was all state in hurdles. He was an all state 500 meter runner. Uh, he was a, and he was a fantastic and a really easy kid to coach. So, um, but we, we have tons of those athletes that, that did, that were sprinters or hurdlers and that did cross country. Uh, or, or did uh, and mix them around. So that's why I wanted to combine everybody together um, because this way it will all build your strength. Um, program goals and expectations. Uh, so just so we know, there's no practice on Thursdays after school during the school year. There will be during the summer, but not during the school year. Um, there may be cases where we might, but those will be on a case by case basis. Um, the weekly schedule, uh, every week I will send out a schedule. I will hopefully send it out. My goal is always to send it out Friday or Saturday evening, um, but it usually sometimes comes on Sunday. I will try to be mindful though, because um, I know that it's real easy when it's better when you have the schedule ahead of time so you can plan your week ahead of time. Um, I'm, I now know that a lot better since I have lots, I have three children that I have lots of obligations with them. So um, it helps me plan that. Um, and also the other thing is we're creating a legacy with this program. Uh, you guys are going to be the first ones that are going to go through all of these seasons. And we need to make sure that we're stepping off on the right foot because what happens with our group is what's going to happen in five years and 10 years and 15 years. Those traditions get carried down from group to group to group. Um, and that's really important, especially when it's a, and it's a tradition of winning. And that's what we established uh, in previous places. And that's what we were going to establish at Gainesville. Um, we have a beautiful setup of the facility is absolutely gorgeous. Um, I got a chance to jog around the perimeter the other day. I'm trying to kind of making sure I don't go places where I'm not supposed to be. I don't want to get in trouble. Um, so, but, uh, but we have a, a beautiful facility, a uh, really secluded um, other than being right next to Jiffy Lube, which on concert nights are going to be super exciting when we have to do a track meet and, a, and have a concert at the same time, but hopefully it'll be a good concert. Maybe we'll get free. We can have a free admission that way. Um, Needs for all seasons. Everybody will need good training shoes. Um, they need to be running shoes. Um, the running store over on Atlas Walk is an easy one to go to. Um, uh, Ian uh, over there at the running store has always done a really good job of outfitting my athletes uh, with really good shoes, making sure that they uh, are prepared for the season. Um, rule of thumb, you're probably gonna go through about one pair of training shoes a season, about 400, four to four to four, 450 miles uh, on in a pair of shoes. You might be able to extend it into two, but um, one of the surefire ways that you know your shoes are dead is when you start getting like calf cramps and your Achilles starts hurting. That usually means that your shoes are starting to die and you probably are, um, we need to get new ones. So, uh, but those are, that's the, the first thing that you need to have. We absolutely need to have shoes. Second thing you, everyone needs to have is a watch. Um, it doesn't need to be a GPS watch. doesn't need to be a Garmin or a Sunto or anything like that. Um, you really just need like a good old fashioned Timex Ironman that starts and stops. That's all you need. Um, because there'll be times where I'll be like, I operate on minutes, not on mileage. Um, so, uh, there'll be times where I'm going like to go for 60 minutes or 45 minutes. And if you don't have a watch, you're going to have no idea. You're not running with your phone. You're not running with earbuds. You're not running with like, we're going to be, if we run, we run as a group, um, and, uh, and on ability levels. Um, but you, and that's how we're going to keep building team, team unity and, um, building that really good team. Um, camaraderie and that we're going to be really united. Um, so we're going to be talking. Um, maybe I'll give you something to talk about on your runs, but we're going to be talking. Uh, you need to have a water bottle. This is the same water bottle or multiple water bottles that you're going to be carrying around during the school day. I drink water all during the school day. Ms. Joyner drinks all during the school day. Um, and so it's incredibly important to make sure you're drinking because if you're not drinking water, you're not hydrated when you come to practice on a day when it's in the like low 90s or high 80s, when we still have practice, you're going to need to make sure that you are um, ready and you are prepared for practice and, and injuries can happen when you're dehydrated. Um, you need to have running training clothes. T-shirts are fine. Um, you don't need anything technical running clothes just to make sure you're comfortable when you run. Um, and, and you'll, as you do it, you'll see other people and you'll know what to get. If you have questions, feel free to reach out to me or to Ms. Joyner. I will make sure we, um, I get her email. Uh, Ms. Joyner, if you want to put your email in the chat, just so everyone has it. Um, if they have any questions for her, you can also ask her questions. Um, we will be doing things. Um, we do a lot of core. 
Um, I will, you can bring a yoga mat. I will let you know when we'll be doing core days. Um, so, but we will use the track. Um, uh, most of the days, there are days where the track will just be unbearably hot and we're not going to be using the track um, or the turf because it may just get too hot, but we'll find grass or we'll find something. But a uh, yoga mat could be an option. You don't need to go out and buy one. Just have it as an option. If you feel like you want to get one, you can. Um, and then the last thing you need is spikes for racing. And this is the actual spike is the shoe. I will provide the little metal screw part in that goes into the front of it. Um, and these are going to be shoes that are going to be um, that are really lightweight. They're not meant for training, but they're meant for you practicing, or if you're practicing hurdles or sprints in them, they're good for that. But if you're, pra if you're, uh, racing, you're going to get the most out of you because you're going to have the lightest thing on your feet. Um, so those are the important things you do not need. And this is a really funny thing. Cause I, I was thinking about this earlier and I never thought I'd actually have to write something so weird like this, but, um, you don't need to buy the super shoes. Um, there are, there are spikes out there and I'm sure if you watch the Olympic trials over the last 12 day or 10 days. Um, and, uh, there are, there are some spikes that are, uh, they call them super shoes, racing flats. Uh, the road ones are really with carbon fiber plates in them that help absorb shock. So you don't get tired as quickly. Um, but those are, you do not need to buy those, um, that you can buy a simple distance spike, usually for distance runners that will get you through cross country and a pair of spikes usually might get you through an entire, uh, entire year of racing. Uh, cross country, indoor and outdoor. So um, kind of when you kind of budget in your mind, um, one pair of spikes will last you a while. Um, it's not something that you're going to be buying on like a, a daily basis, but the metal parts, I will buy the metal ones. Um, I have a, cause cross country specifically, we change and meets surfaces, uh, muddier days. We'll go with closer to inch long spikes. Um, I've worn those a couple times. Um, they, they are feel incredibly weird on your feet. Um, but then there'll be meets where we just go with simple quarters and nothing uh, too crazy. So, um, so now I'm just going to go through the three seasons. So you kind of have a, a, a very general gist of what all of them look like. Uh, we start August 2nd. Um, it is a, uh, that it, there will be our first practice. Uh, it will most likely be in the morning. Um, I just have to make sure that my grades are for virtual Prince William are all done. So, um, but I'm, it's probably going to be a uh, ballpark e nine or 10. I'll work with Mr. Eldridge and we'll, we'll talk about, uh, when we're going to do that. Uh, we will be planning on practicing Monday through Saturday. Um, there will be Thursdays, uh, during the summer, no Thursdays during the school year. I think there's like two weeks before we go back to work. It's used to be four, but now it's like two weeks because I think we go back the 16th. Um, so, uh, so once we go back to 16th practice goes in the evening, then, uh, summer times are going to be determined. There will be variations between mornings to get out of the heat, may practice between seven and 8.00 AM. And then maybe as late as six or 7.00 PM, um, trying to avoid some of the heat. Uh, if we have thunderstorms or anything like that, clearly we don't run in thunder and lightning. Uh, that's just dangerous and dumb, um, especially when you're out on open fields. Um, we will move around the community, Manassas Battlefield, Bristow Station, Conway Robinson, um, the sidewalks on Linton Hall and Sudley Manor, uh, Victory Elementary, uh, Gainesville uh, High School, um, some at Gainesville Middle School until we can actually get on the Gainesville High School. Um, so, and I will have a parent meeting again at the start of the season where I'll go into more of the nitty gritty, the schedule um little things that i need specifically for that season i'm just trying to give you a very broad generalization all of it just so you all can start planning for what the season will look like uh indoor track we are outside i i, I do want to say this for indoor track because it is a common misconception uh it is called indoor track because the the state meet is indoors. We're at Boo Williams. It's gorgeous that we're at the Boo Williams. Con. They redid it. I don't remember what it's called now. Uh, it's a beautiful bank track. Uh, it's a stadium. However, um, we are outside almost every single meet. Um, it will be cold. You need to dress appropriately, whether that is wearing um, tights. Um, and uh, if you have questions when we get in it, we always have our uniform. Uh, inevitably, in our dual meets, we always waive the probably the uniform, the, the bottom part of the rule, um, and allow people just to throw their jersey on over like a long sleeve, um, because we can practice up until 32 degrees. Um, I practice as long as Coach Eldridge doesn't tell me I can't practice, uh, and so that's that's those are the times when I would uh, not practice. So. Uh, we start November 8th um, and we go through the state meet is February 21st. Um, uh, so February 28th, uh, that was 25th, 26th. Sorry, I knew I'd get it right. All the dates in my brain. Um, and so that's the state meet. So it's long. Uh, the other thing, and I, I want to piggyback on his uh, thing that he mentioned, um, I've had students 
Uh, unfortunately, we've had kids in the past who have made themselves ineligible for the postseason meets. So you run all your indoor meets and then you get to January and then we don't have any meets after that, after that Martin Luther King weekend and kids begin themselves ineligible um, because of, of a grade or two. Um, grades are important. I try my best to stay up on them. I can't stay up on everybody. Um, I, like I said, when we were at, when I'm in my previous school, I was, we had 120 to 140 kids this season. Um, and so we had a really big team. Um, so I can't keep track of everybody, but I try my best. Um, so, uh, and that's where parents will come in. If your child is struggling, please reach out. Um, I, I, grades are the most important part. Like I said, student athletes, students first, uh, athletics are second. Um, and so I have no problem with working with you. If a student needs to miss a few meets because they are uh, falling behind, we can, um, we can play catch up and do stuff that way. So um, I, I'd rather them be better. I want them to be stellar people in the, in the classrooms. Um, so I'll be starting meeting at that one. Uh, that will be like a probably late October where I'll have a meeting. Um, so, oh, did I have the same slide twice? Oh, no, I didn't cross country. I went the wrong direction. Sorry. Um, so we'll have a meeting prior to that. We are hosting, as Coach Elder said, we are hosting districts and regionals. Um, I will need a bevy of parent help, and that will be on the last slide uh, that I talk about. Outdoor track starts February 21st. Um, so we always start the season before the last one ends. So with the outdoor track starting on the, so like, Indoor track starts November 8th. The state meet is November 15th. Uh, out, uh, outdoor track starts February 21st. The indoor state track meet is the February 26th. Uh, it's 25th and 26th. It's a Friday, Saturday meet. It's an overnight meet. Um, so oh, real quick, events in indoor, 55, 300, 500, 1,000, 1,600, 3,200, 55 hurdles, long jump, high jump, triple jump, pole vault, shot put, four by two, four by one, sorry, four by four, four by eight. Uh, indoor outdoor is one, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 110 hurdles. Those are the high hurdles, uh, 300 hurdles, uh, high jump, long jump, triple jump, pole vault, shot put discus, four by two, four by four, four by eight. Uh, we will have a meeting prior to the start of this season, uh, as well. Uh, we are not hosting, uh, as of right now, um, I'm looking at hosting an invitational. Um, I want a, a lot of parents to be involved with our program. Um, and I'm going to do parents first, and then I'm going to come back up to students, and then we'll answer questions. Um, parents, uh, I, I want you to be involved in the meets. Um, I and Ms. Joyner can attest, we worked very hard. Uh, I run a very efficient meet. I, it's one of the things that I'm very proud of, um, that I will get you, I will get your kids in and out on a Wednesday meet, um, because it is a school night, and I will get them in and out of there so fast. Um, we just roll. Um, it is, it is something I, I don't really ever talk about myself. And that's one thing I will brag about myself. I do a very good job with meets. Um, and I need a lot of volunteers because the more volunteers I have, the smoother meat can run. And it could be as simple as using a parent who is over at the shot put circle, helping throw back, um, the shots at the end of each throw or retrieving discs and bringing those back, um, or helping rake in long jump, triple jump pits. Um, and, and it's an easy way. One, if you're volunteering, you get into meets for free and two, uh, and, uh, and two, if you're helping, um, it, it keeps you involved with what's going on. Um, and that way, if your child is a long jumper, you can get really start to learn about what goes on in the intricacies because like watching the professionals, like watching the guys and the long jump last night, um, cause I don't know if you, any of you watched the Olympic trials of men's long jump was last night. Um, and it was a, uh, it was a watching them, they make it look so easy and it's really not trying to get the motion of the leg turnover and then also getting the angle of the body so that you can land on your butt, but flat, like on the side, it, it takes a lot of practice. So, um, just kind of the little things and learning the ins and outs, pole vaulting, um, getting to learn, um, how that operates, um, and stuff like that. Cause, uh, it, it's a, it's just very intricate. So, um, being involved, uh, and I will ask for those, you don't need to volunteer yourselves now. Um, but I will ask for volunteers in the, in the, in the future and, and help, um, and get that. And even if you have siblings that want to help, I, I will always find a use for someone at a meet. Um, you can also be an official and I will talk with you guys, uh, those who are interested in doing that, um, as we go along too. Um, I do need, uh, parents to be booster reps, uh, whether that's, I, I prefer multiple parents because I think it's a lot to have one parent do all three seasons. Um, but if it's something that you feel that you're like the best at and you're awesome at, I will, I will happily take, uh, as many, um, as many, uh, volunteers, as many reps as we can do. Um, I would like to have it set up because I would like my program to run where 
we were able to funnel a lot of the out of season meets or, and I should say that the out of season meets are things like indoor nationals. Those are at the armory in New York city. It is a beautiful facility. Um, and, uh, and it is a gorgeous place to go, but I would love to have that. So that way parents can help organize that meet and it takes something off of me and the rest of the coaching staff. Um, and so that way we can figure out hotels. Um, we can use that booster rep. We can fundraise ourselves and we have enough money in our booster account where we can pay for the athletes to go to those meets. Um, maybe not flitting the bill for their hotels, but at least paying the bill uh, for their meet entry uh, into it, especially the relays. Um, being able to go and uh, go to Penn Relays um, and, and go to that meet and uh, and, and be able to stay overnight and, um, and cross country. We won't this year, but next year we're going to have an overnight meet. We're going to go down to Cary. Um, it's a great meet down there in North Carolina. Um, I love going to that place. It's super fun. Uh, like I said, involvement, parent rep, booster reps. I love this program just to be operational on its own uh, and have enough money where we can afford to do some really fun things um, as a group. Um, and, uh, that, that's one of the more, in, uh, one of the more fun things I think we can do. Um, and so, uh, that's one of the things I would love to do. Um, I plan on having a, a bunch of meetings. I want to work with the boosters, uh, with my booster rep parents, especially, um, I we will be working with the school for fundraising, but I also want to have ideas for what we can do, um, within our, uh, within our group, uh, we'll do concessions, um, that stuff we're going to be doing. Um, and so, uh, I, I will have plenty of opportunities and if there's something that you feel really like, you're like, you know, I can help doing this, or I can help doing that, whether it's boosters, uh, whether it's concessions at track meets, there's not a lot of track meets, but I, I need people to help with those things. So, um, I'd really appreciate it. So, um, just kind of have that in your mind. And then for students, those of you who are students that are there, um, if you can, um, I, I like to try to get kids involved, especially, um, especially for those who are um, the, um, especially for those who want to be journalists, I, I'm willing, I love supporting that. I had a, I have a student who actually, uh, who uh, graduated from the uh, Missouri School of Journalism. Um, and so, uh, and he is a sports reporter and he loves doing it. Um, and uh, so I love getting kids involved with things. So um, we do plan on having a team website um, I, I don't know how that's going to work right now. I kind of have to figure out, I don't want to make, put too much on my plate. Um, so I will figure that out, but, uh, I do plan on having some sort of thing to go. Um, but I also want to make sure that we have, um, that if you have something you want to practice writing, I'm willing to do that. I, I will work with a school newspaper to get people out there. So that way you can do it. And then also things like captains, um, and, and stuff like that. So those are all areas where we're going to, um, need student involvement. So. Um, but that's, those are the big areas that I'm going to need help in. Um, if there's any other question or if there are any questions, please feel free. Thank you for coming back, everybody. I'm sorry about that. Um, Mr. Eldridge accidentally meant to hit switch his screen, but he ended the meeting. Um, so it's all good. Um, but if you have a question, um, send in, uh, send a question and I'm happy to answer them. Uh, if not, you can shoot me emails. Like I said, XC, uh, TNF at, um, GainesvilleHS.com uh, is the easiest one, um, and I will post this um, somehow. I have the school. Um, when is trials? Okay, so tryouts. Um, there are no real trials, but we have start dates. Um, so the start date is going to be on August 2nd for cross country, uh, November 8th uh, for in winter track, and then February 21st for outdoor track. Um, so those will be the dates, um, but I'm going to send for those of you who are doing cross country, I will send you uh, a schedule to get you started with running over the next, um, probably not today, probably tomorrow. Um, and that way you can start running. Um, we will worry about abs, core, all that stuff when I can watch you do them correctly and make sure that you're not doing them incorrectly. Um, so I will make sure I do that. So, um, that's the start of the seasons. So and Ms. Joyner put my other, my PWCS in there uh, also. Um, so you can feel free to, um, no, uh, no, there's honestly, uh, if you're new to throwing, um, we will start you off when we get going uh, right at the beginning. Um, and so, um, um, yeah, we'll get going uh, with, uh, with throwing and teaching the fundamentals of it. Uh, Mr. Uh, Coach Sut it does a fantastic job of, of um, making sure that uh, everybody um, really, it, it, he just does a, he does a fantastic job of, of really introducing the uh, sport to everybody. Um, and so indoor only has shot and then outdoor has the shot and the disc. 
which is good. Shot's an easier one to pick up. This can be a little complicated. Um, and also, if you're interested in throwing, um, a big thing with throwing, I also like to tell people, everybody always looks and says they, they always will go, oh, I, they may make a judgment on body size. We will find the event that, that fits best for you. Um, throwers don't always have to be the biggest people on there. They always assume that, that they don't have to be. Um, throwers need to be long. Discus throwers need to have long limbs, long arms. Um, so always, uh, we will fit you. If you don't know what you want to do, I will, we will fit people. I've, I've moved people in the high jump that I, we've tried them there. We, uh, move kids around, um, events in indoor track, 55, 300, 500, 000, 1600, 3,200 long jump, triple jump, high jump shot put, and then the relays four by two, four by four and four by eight. Uh, how I'll, I'm going to send it through email tomorrow. Um, and I, and I will send the link of where everybody's, um, needs to go. And I'm going to send the a sign up link in just one second. Let me move stuff out of the way. All right. And then I got a great question on mileage. So mileage, we will be running honestly, probably in the ballparks of low teens or high uh, to twenties to start. And then we build, but each person's different. Um, some people can handle higher mileage than other people, but I'm not going to know that until we start working and I start seeing what you can do and what you can handle. So um, everybody will start kind of similar. And then from there, we'll then adjust accordingly. But each person, there'll be days where other people will be doing different workouts and stuff like that. So uh, it won't be everybody doing the exact same workout also. So um, all right, and I need to open this real quick and I'm going to send this. And this is a way for if you need to get an email, um, I'm going to put it in the chat, not on my question and answer form. So hold on, send a link, shorten URL. We'll see. Zoom. I'm going to place this in the chat too. Here you go. And then this is if you want to get emails and this goes and it will ask you about which one you want to do cross country, indoor or outdoor and throw that on there. Um, you can click all that apply. Um, like I said, though, I wanted to have everybody together because I think it's important that even if you're like, I'm a sprinter, but you're not doing anything in the fall, it's really good to just do cross country and uh, you do something different. You may not even race. We may throw you in one Wednesday meet because you have to race once. Um, but that's all we'll do. Um, and, and I'll talk with you on a case by case basis. So, all right. Any other questions? My daughter's raising her hand. She has a question. <laughs> all right. Well, if there are no other questions in the chat, you guys are welcome to go. Thank you very much. And sorry about the little, little mix up right there, but uh, you guys have a lovely evening and I will be emailing everybody out tomorrow. If you want to get an email, but you didn't get that link, uh, send me an email and I will happily send it on there. My email, and I'll put that in the chat as well, is... Um, And also I have, uh, or the cross country T and F at gainesvillehs.com. So those are my emails. And I'll just wait a minute so you guys can both go. But yeah, you guys have a great evening. If you have any other questions, throw them in the chat. If not, you have a lovely evening.